Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining today despite the short notice. I have the pleasure of serving as the MC today. My name is Nagata of Toyota Motor Corporation. Uh, we would like to start the joint press conference by four companies, Daimler Truck, Mitsubishi, Fuso Truck and Bus, Hino Motor, and Toyota Motor Corporation. Those of you who are expected to take stage, uh, please do so at this juncture. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you those who are on the stage. CEO of Daimler Truck, Martin Dome. President and CEO of Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation, Carl Deppen. President and CEO of Toyota Motor Corporation, Koji Sato. And President and CEO of Hino Motors, Satoshi Okiso. First of all, President and CEO of Toyota Motor Corporation, Sato, is going to say a few words. I'm Koji Sato of Toyota. Thank you very much for joining us today, despite your busy schedule and the short notice. Today, Daimler Truck, Mitsubishi Fusil Truck and Bus, Hino, and Toyota, these four companies, agreed to collaborate toward strengthening their commercial vehicle businesses. Mitsubishi Fuso and Hino will merge on an equal footing to strengthen their global competitiveness. Furthermore, our four companies will pursue new possibilities in the commercial vehicle business by leveraging Daimler Truck and Toyota's case technologies. Today, I would like to talk about the aims of this collaboration and our thoughts behind it. Behind this collaboration is our four companies' strong desire to create the future of commercial vehicles together. Commercial vehicles, which support our daily lives through the movement of people and goods, are an important form of mobility that can truly be called part of our social infrastructure. Integrating them into social systems can further enhance the value of mobility. Toward achieving carbon neutrality, it is essential to evolve commercial vehicles which account for 40 percent of the world's automotive CO2 emissions into environmentally friendly mobility. In other words, the challenge of creating a new future for commercial vehicles will play an important role in the creation of a prosperous mobility society. The case technology such as electrification and automated driving hold the key to this. Case technologies are useful to society only when they are widely used, and this requires technological development capabilities. When it comes to surviving this era of case, the Japanese commercial vehicle market is small compared to the rest of the world, and it's difficult for each company to compete alone. To create a prosperous mobility society, there is a strong need not only for competition, but also for all of us to work together to build the future. With such in mind, we hope to accelerate the spread of case technologies through the four-company collaboration. Through the merger, Mitsubishi Funo and Hino will enhance synergies between them and improve business efficiencies in development, procurement, and production. By doing so, they will strengthen the business foundation and competitiveness of their case technology efforts. Daimler Truck and Toyota will bring together the strength of both of their companies to support the post-merger company with case technologies while also working to further strengthen the technological capabilities between themselves. 
The gathering of our four companies will also open up new possibilities for the future. Particularly, we believe that initiatives in the hydrogen area are a major theme on which our four companies will focus and cooperate to realize a prosperous mobility society. From early on, Daimler Truck and Toyota have focused on the potential of hydrogen energy and have actively promoted the development of fuel cell and hydrogen engine technologies. We have also been working on the commercialization of products and the development of a hydrogen infrastructure to promote the widespread use of such technologies. Our four companies, including Mitsubishi, Fuso, and Hino, intend to accelerate the dissemination of hydrogen mobility, starting with commercial vehicles. To work together towards such a future, we will first establish a business foundation that can compete globally through the merging of Mitsubishi, Fuso, and Hino. And through healthy competition, we will contribute to a better future for commercial vehicles. With Daimler Truck CEO Mr. Dao, I talked about changing the future of commercial vehicles, the necessity of scale for the dissemination of case technologies, and the idea that the future is for us to build together. While sharing these aspirations and values, we repeatedly discuss the ideal form of our partnership. We were able to confirm each other's vision in the process, and I believe that we had very meaningful discussions. I would love to have Mr. Daum to also share his thoughts about this collaboration. Hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here today with all of you and with our partners, Sato-san and oguizo san I work in this industry for more than three decades, and this day definitely is one of the most special days in my entire career, because the news we can share with you today are truly great news. We intend to link the future of two amazing companies and to shape the future of the commercial vehicle industry in Japan, in Asia, and even beyond. Let me give you some context. At Daimler Truck, we are very proud of our products. Each and every one of the 520,000 trucks and buses we sold in 2022 in North America, for example, with our Freightliner brand in Europe, with our Mercedes-Benz brand, and of course, in Asia, with our Fuso brand. I'm sure our partners here on stage feel exactly the same about their products. That's because trucks and buses truly fulfill a purpose. With our vehicles, our customers keep supermarkets, factories, and construction sites up and running. And they bring people to work, to school, to their favorite destination. In short, trucks and buses keep the world moving. This is true today, and it will also be true tomorrow. Though this will not change. One thing will change, however. Tomorrow, trucks and buses will need to be emission-free. This means our products will become even more amazing. They will not only keep the world moving, but they will do so in a sustainable way. So there's an absolute compelling future ahead of us, and at Daimler Truck, we can't wait, wait to make this future a reality. We are fully committed to lead the technological transformation and to fight climate change. At the end of 2022, we already had eight zero emission trucks and buses in serious production. One prime example is our Fuso e -Kanta. We first launched our e back in 2017 as a true pioneer. Just recently, we introduced our next generation e which is already available in 70 variants. So far, so good. But we are accelerating towards zero emissions. There is one big challenge, 
and this is the required funding. The transformation of our industry means we have to fund several new drive technologies at the same time. Batteries, hydrogen-based fuel cells, and potentially also hydrogen internal combustion engines. This is quite a stretch even for the leading companies in our industry. And there is only one way to make this parallel tech development work, economies of scale. Scale is key. It is absolutely essential to leverage investments and to spread them across a larger base. And today we are making a bold move in this respect. We intend to combine the forces of two of the three largest commercial vehicle manufacturers in Japan, and this was increased scale dramatically. The combined Fuso Hino business would, all, would have full access to Daimler Trucks technology on the heavy duty side. This merger would be a complete game, will be a complete game changer. I'm glad that we found the perfect partner who did the very same analysis and who has the very same vision. Everyone, I'm convinced that we are announcing today does not just have the potential to make our company stronger, to make our customers stronger by ensuring an even stronger product lineup, and to boost the transformation to zero transport. And this will benefit all of us. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite Carl Deppen to the stage. Well, good afternoon. First of all, thank you very much for all of you coming here today and joining us around the world for our press conference. My name is Carl Deppen. I'm the CEO of Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Company. You've already heard quite a bit about this project from my associates, but let me give you also the Fuso point of view. I'll begin with some basic background. The Fuso brand was founded by the Mitsubishi Group over 90 years ago. Daimler took shares in Mitsubishi Fuso in 2003 and no owns 89% of the stock. We sell commercial vehicles in around 170 markets, and Mitsubishi Fuso products are well known for their efficiency, reliability, and superior safety. As leaders for the electric light-duty trucks, we recently started selling also the new e -Counter. So, with all that success and history, why are we now tying up with Hino? Simply put, the world is changing, and our industry needs to change with it. Japan's economy and the societies of Asia need state-of-the-art transportation. At the same time, Japan has committed to be carbon neutral by 2050. We take it as, a, as our task to be part of the solution to decarbonize transportation. And today's customers demand even more. Connectivity, automation, electrification. A whole range of advanced services and technology to make logistics as safe, as efficient, and as profitable as possible. All while causing the least possible harm to the environment. And I'll be frank, developing that takes enormous investment, resources, and also expertise. To continue to offer our customers value while also staying successful ourselves, we need partners and we need industrial scale. And who better to tie up with than Hino Motors, a company as dedicated to the commercial vehicle industry as ourselves. Together, we will become a force a strong Japanese truck company with a complementary portfolio of products, a massive service and dealer network, and a workforce of highly experienced, motivated employees across the globe. With this bold move, we will more than double our resources. That means increased access to knowledge, expertise, and a wider network of suppliers and infrastructure more people working together to develop technology faster. 
It means better value for our customers. It provides opportunities for our employees. It will benefit our suppliers and our dealers. And it will safeguard the return to our shareholders as well. This merger will position us as the foremost player in the Asian transportation industry. Strong enough to compete with all the new brands we see entering the markets, especially outside of Japan. I am really looking forward to all the new possibilities this collaboration will open up. Another important point for me is the nature of that collaboration. From the time this discussion first started, I knew we needed a win-win solution for all parties involved. Merging two companies that have traditionally been competitors is, of course, a challenge. Despite everything we have in common, there is no denying that we are two independent companies who have been in competition for a long time. But this collaboration can only work if we join as equals, respecting each other, respecting each other's strengths, and working together to make a future brighter than either of us could find alone. That is why I'm so satisfied with the terms we have set forth here today. One company with two strong, distinct brands, supported by the expertise and resources of Toyota and Daimler truck. Of course, there is still a lot of work to do, a lot of questions to answer here in Japan and in all our markets. But that's why we are going to take our time and do things right. We are going to check every aspect of the project carefully over the next 18 months, with the target to completing the transaction by the end of 2024. It is a daunting task, but I have full confidence not only in the fantastic team of Daimler Truck and Mitsubishi Fuso, but also in our new friends at Toyota and Hino. So let me close by saying thank you and welcome to them as well. I am so excited to see what we will achieve in the coming years. We are growing to go together. Now, on this note, I will pass on the floor to Mr. Ogiso, CEO of Hino Motors. Thank you. Thank you. I am Ogiso from Hino Motors. Hino announced our engine certification issue last year, and we take this misconduct seriously to reestablish ourselves and prevent recurrences of similar incidents. We have announced in October last year our three reforms to regain the trust from all of our stakeholders, starting with our customers. All of Hino employees are promoting the reforms one by one wholeheartedly. Hino's strength is in the whole flow from sales to after services, not only for our products, but from a total perspective, including quality, durability, and maintenance. We work to contribute to our customers' business. As we continue to address the certification issue, there have been many people, including dealers, that have cooperated with us to support our customers in order to protect the Hino brand, even though we have troubled them greatly. Experiencing this support I'm feeling the importance of rebuilding ourselves so that we can continue to contribute to our customers into the future. On the other hand, we find ourselves in a once-in-a-century transformation period facing social issues such as carbon neutrality, lack of drivers, traffic accidents, etc. We have no time to lose in developing the case technologies. 
Hino has been focused on addressing thoroughly the engine certification issues and also the initiatives for the future, such as carbon neutrality. Together with our colleagues, we have been struggling and pondering on the question of how we can respond to the expectations of our stakeholders and customers. For the engine certification issue, we are starting to move forward little by little with our related activities. But when it comes to dealing with the environmental changes such as carbon neutrality simultaneously, this has been a challenge for us as a single entity. And this has been my long-time struggle. In this context, this collaboration between the four companies, for us, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Daimler Truck and Toyota, who are leaders in the case technologies and also the leading companies for commercial vehicles and passenger cars. And Mitsubishi Fuso, who also has a very long history as a Japanese commercial vehicle maker like us. Together with the three companies, we can unite ourselves to contribute to society through supporting mobility and to walk towards the future together. This is where I feel the great significance of this collaboration. Hino will work on dealing with the certification issues and re-establish our foundation with our own efforts, and then create the future with this four-company collaboration. Mitsubishi Fuso and Hino were the early entrants to the Southeast Asian markets. And both companies always try to be engaged in the local communities to contribute to people's lives through the flow of people and goods. In order to continue the contribution throughout to the future, this collaboration is absolutely necessary now. Hino will promote this project with an all-company effort and after the merging targeted at the end of 2024, working together with Mr. Carl Deppen's team, I'm determined to create a team that can learn and empathize with each other. Now, may we call all of the four CEOs to the stage again. So we will have a final greeting from Mr. Sato and Mr. Daum. Excuse me. Today, we are taking a giant step in changing the future of commercial vehicles. We believe that the future will be built by working together. From now on, our four companies will take on the challenge of working together as one. We hope that you will look forward to what we will achieve. Mr. Daum, please. For me, Toyota was always a shining beacon on the passenger car side, <laughs> the leading company in the world. We are Daimler Trucks. We are the biggest truck company of the world, together with a strong commitment to technology as well. Together with our two companies, Fuso and Hino, I think this is the perfect combination to lead this industry in the future and I really like the attitude from Ogizu san and Deppen san, uh, how they described the works, the next steps, bringing those two entities together, fully aware that we have two broad, successful Japanese companies to make it to really the truly Asian leader of trucking.
This completes today's presentations. Uh, those of you who are on the stage, please step down from the stage. Thank you very much. This is going to be followed by the Q&A session. And please give us a few more minutes so that we can prepare the stage for Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to open the Q&A session. Uh, please take the stage of those of you who have made presentations. Please take a seat. Uh, today we have journalists and reporters stationed both present in the hall in person and those of you participating uh, online. First, we would like to entertain questions from those journalists physically present here in the hall. If you have a question, please raise your hand so that the microphone can be brought to you. And we would like to receive questions from as many people as possible. So please uh, limit yourselves to two questions at most, two questions per person. The person in the front row, please, first. Nikkan Automotive Newspaper, Mizutori is my name. I have two questions, please. The first question is addressed to uh, Mr. Sato and Mr. Daum, CEOs of both companies. Uh, could you describe the process that led to this collaboration? When did you start the discussion? In what manner? And how did you reach this agreement on collaboration? Mr. Sato, you talked about leveraging the strength of both companies. What have you considered strength of those the two companies? Uh, there seems to be a difference in the strength between Hino and Fuso. Could you describe that? Uh, Mr. Dom, uh, the Hino is now working hard to reestablish itself from the engine problem. But despite that, you have decided to join hands with Hino. What made you to decide on that? The second question is addressed to uh, Mr. Sato. Toyota has collaboration alliance with Isuzu, and Isuzu uh, is partnered with uh, Volvo, and it has UD as a subsidiary, and Volvo uh, is working on FC as well. So the relationship has become complicated. Of course, very important to establish partnership to expand the commercial vehicle business, but uh, how are you intending to enhance and maximize the synergy that can be generated in that complicated situation? Thank you very much for your question. Let me just describe the process that led to this collaboration. As you already know, 
Uh, we are making efforts uh, trying to achieve carbon neutrality and on the global scale uh, through many partnerships that need to be pursued and various discussions are underway. Of course, we have been working on hydrogen and we have been trying to achieve different options that we can provide in the industry. And in that context, we have been discussing with many partners and many parties. In that context, when it comes to hydrogen and case technology for them uh, to be used uh, on the widespread uh, uses, uh, we believe it is very important uh, to achieve collaboration in the commercial vehicle business. And that importance was brought to our attention by Mr. Dom last year uh, for this um, strengthening of efforts, achieving carbon neutrality, as well as um, enhancing the technology, uh, we decided to discuss the potential for a collaboration. And including that, we have decided to enhance competitiveness on the global scale with four companies collaborating with each other. And that uh, brought us to decide on this decision. In this broad-based collaboration, that's the only way that we can create the movements moving toward the achievement of carbon neutrality. And that is the common uh, beliefs underpinning the determination of all four companies. Should I ask Mr. Dom to respond to the same question as well at this juncture? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. That, uh, and it was potentially uh, 10 questions in one sentence when you ask your, and I try to uh, answer some of them at least. I would say if, uh, the process started when we, uh, when Toyota company, Satosan, Daimler Truck, myself, and Deppensan, we uh, looked especially, first of all, in the future vision, and we, we shared it. Yeah, It has to be a carbon neutral, uh, worldwide uh, <clears throat> technology in the trucking side. And we all agreed that truck is extremely broad. You know, it went, it goes from the really small delivery, small trucks to the really heavy duty trucks uh, doing mining or construction work. And while everyone has its strengths, we, for example, at Daimler trucks, especially on the heavy duty side, we have our significant weaknesses. For example, when it comes to light duty, where we have only a small volume of scale basis. And then uh, Toyota and Daimler Trucks immediately agreed that this would be a perfect way to increase the scales we have and we need for technology. And then there was always a second thing, which the two of our companies, a band that links the two of our companies. And that is a belief that the future, the carbon neutral future of uh, automotive mobility is hydrogen. And therefore, I'm really excited to work together on the Daimler truck level, together with Toyota, when it comes to promote hydrogen as the solution, in my opinion, uh, to carbon neutrality on mobility. Thank you very much, Mr. Dong. And uh, let me respond to the content of your second question. First of all, uh, with respect to our partnership, whether Isuzu will continue collaboration thoroughly and will try to generate synergy, we'll continue to do that without any fail. But at the same time, for the past few weeks, we have been working on the framework of CJPT, which carries a great significance with respect to the case technology. The planning is important and also expand the quantitative scale and also the development of infrastructure. It requires multifaceted approach. And for planning, uh, to create uh, some consensus and create an important uh, process uh, while leveraging the framework of CJPT, uh, we would like to continue very proactive actions. And when it comes to actual activities or initiatives, of course, it will be pursued by individual companies in their own uh, project. And uh, connecting those different projects will accelerate the speed of giving concrete shape to different projects. So including uh, Isuzu, we would like to accelerate the movement toward the achievement of case technology. Thank you. Next person, please. Person in the second row, 
from the left side, the woman. I'm Take from Nikkei Asia. I also have two questions. My first question will be about Toyota and Daimler having a collaboration through this holding company, the merging company, and to develop the hydrogen and case technologies. So specifically, what, how will the two companies work together? What kind of technologies does each company own for case technologies, and how are you going to try to create synergy? I want to learn more from a specific point. And the next is about the new company that will be created. On the press release, it said that you're looking toward to having uh, being powerful in Southeast Asia. Specifically, what will that mean? And right now, how do you look at the commercial vehicle market? For the passenger car in Thailand, Indonesia, India, and the Chinese makes are now uh, evolving greatly. But what about the commercial vehicle side? What is the market situation there in the Southeast Asia market? And related to that, uh, I think uh, Toyota is quite active in the Thailand market for hydrogen technologies. So how will that initiative be related to this new company? Will it be in related or not? For this question, probably we should ask uh, Mr. Deppen uh, to respond first. Yeah, thank you. I think the uh, situation we see in the uh, Southeast Asian market uh, outside Japan is, of course, uh, also quite complementary. And uh, what you have described, Takei-san, is uh, a good observation. We see a lot of <coughs> new uh, competitors entering the region. And uh, both companies have a very strong footprint in Southeast Asia, but in quite complementary markets. So I think we have a very good uh, addition uh, if we combine the two strong companies, uh, both enjoying very strong brand in the region, strong networks, uh, strong distribution and uh, service networks that will help us to compete even better in the very competitive field of Southeast Asia. And as you know, the markets are very different uh, depending on the regulations and emission standards. So we are confident that the two companies combined can contribute tremendously also to the development and decarbonization in Southeast Asia. Thank you. For the second question, I think it is a similar perspective, but uh, from we think we can receive uh, responses from Mr. Deppen and Mr. Ogiso. Yeah, I think maybe I start. Uh, of course, <coughs> Toyota and uh, Daimler Truck both have a lot of uh, cooperation, and uh, I think we all strive for the ambition to decarbonize road transportation. And that has already led to significant knowledge and experience among all four companies on fuel cell technologies, hydrogen technologies, and battery electric technology. Uh, but the investments are tremendously high. And this is a good time to bundle the strengths uh, and combine resources to be even stronger and faster in making an impact for customers as well as for society. Thank you. So I think uh, I would also like to provide in response uh, to that question from Ogiso. So Hino Motors and Mitsubishi Fuso, there was a point that raised that the two companies may be similar. But um, what Mr. Deppen said, it covers everything that I wanted to say, actually. And earlier from Mr. Daum, he has explained that when we think about achieving carbon neutrality going forward, hydrogen and the fuel cells and maybe the hydrogen uh, ice, uh, combustion engine, e-fuel, battery EV, various technologies will be necessary to achieve carbon neutrality. And even inside of Hino Motors, as I explained, we have been considering from various aspects, but it's very difficult to work with uh, one company alone in all of these areas. And a similar market, uh, we are competing with uh, Mitsubishi Fuso, but uh, now joining hands uh, with our uh, this uh, conventional uh, rival in a new area we can cooperate. We, that, that is the potential we see, and so that we can respond to our customers' needs. And uh, we talked about, uh, and the question was about Southeast Asia. The same answer applies to Southeast Asia. Up to now, if we were just working with the combustion engine, then uh, at the time of this once-in-a-century transformation, 
information. I think it's important that we work together with like-minded partners, not just work as one company and not just as two companies, including the four companies with Daimler Truck and Toyota having this framework of the four company tra uh, collaboration. I think this will be very uh, valuable to, uh, to make contributions to our customers and society. Thank you. Next person, please. Uh, third row on this line, seated on the farthest right. Oh, there is one other point uh, in the question relating to Toyota's efforts in Thailand. The initiatives Toyota is taking in Thailand, and maybe Mr. Sato can respond to that question. Terribly sorry for forgetting that very last part about the initiatives we are engaged in Thailand that you asked about as we made an announcement some days ago uh, covering hydrogen or mobility solution and data solution. We are taking a multifaceted approach, trying to find solutions that could help and also help uh, support the uh, customers in Thailand, and we will execute and implement our activities in Thailand and new technology and uh, trying to earn uh, smiles on the faces of um, Thailand. Uh, we will take up those challenges and that will become very important going forward. So with um, like-minded partners working with them and in the project-oriented manner, the partners that we can join hands to implement those projects, we would like to pursue that further. In terms of uh, concrete initiatives uh, on the case-by-case -case basis, uh, we would like to discuss and identify in what areas we can work together in that context on one by one. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let me ask the next person to ask their question. Sanke newspaper Ikeda is my name. Two questions, please. Earlier, it's been mentioned about this uh, framework. You talked about economy of scale, importance of scale. Specifically speaking, both in Japan domestically and worldwide, of course, you mentioned the truck has a very broad base. It's covered by a wide area. But through this collaboration, what is going to change in terms of market share? In Japan, uh, Hino has such and such market share and joining hands with Fuso. How is that going to change? And in the world, maybe especially in Asia, concretely speaking, in terms of market share, how are you intending to increase your scale by joining hands? Could you just share with us some numbers and also the background corroborating those numbers? And another related question, through merger and integration, there may be various regulations that you need to go uh, over. That is to say, the antitrust laws, anti-competition laws, is there any hurdles that you need to uh, overcome in different regions? And should there be any hurdles in any region? Is there is there any possibility that you need to separate or carve out certain business? Have you had any discussion on that? So that's the first question. And the second question, with respect to this emerged new company and also the capital structure of that between Toyota and Daimler Truck, uh, you talk about equal shareholding. Are you talking about just two companies being the shareholder of that newly merged company? Or with respect to Mitsubishi Fuso, Mitsubishi Group uh, may have invested in that, in the holding company. Uh, what is, is there any chance that Mitsubishi Group or Mitsubishi companies might invest in that holding company as well? And you also talked about holding company being listed. I think you mentioned that. Now, if you are intending to list that holding company, in what form is it going to be listed? Where is it going to be listed? Is it going to be listed in Tokyo or in Europe? And under the current framework, some of the companies would be delisted with only holding company listed in those markets. And in the case of Toyota, on the consolidated bis business and its performance, he know will remain consolidated and bringing about no change in terms of Toyota's performance, including Hino. I think the question was uh, quite long, and therefore let me just summarize that. The 
first question related to potential change in the numbers, especially in market share in different markets. And in that context, uh, is there any possibility of the breach and violation of antitrust law or anti-monopoly law? Either Mr. Sato or Mr. Dom as CEO, could you take up those two questions, please? OK, let me uh, try to respond to that first with respect to our understanding of the market. The worldwide market, from that perspective, the uh, medium-sized and the heavy-duty trucks uh, the size of the market is around uh, 3 million to 3.5 million units. And in that, Hino uh, is 250,000 units, and Mitsubishi Fuso, 150,000 uh, units. So together, around uh, 400,000 uh, units will be achieved as a result of the merger. So that's economy of scale that can be achieved, of scale accomplished. In terms of the domestic market here in Japan, the market share here, uh, we have Isuzu and UD truck. Uh, the merged company will have the equivalent share against them. So by having friendly competition, uh, we will try to create the build the better future of the commercial uh, vehicle market uh, to realize to be realized through this merger. And that's how I would like you to understand that. And let me move on to the second question. After the merger and the capital and ownership scheme of the merged company after the integration, as shown on this scheme or diagram, Hino and Mitsubishi Fuso, both of these companies will merge with each other. And the holding company, holding this company, well, holding company will be established, and these Hino and Mitsubishi Fuso will become subsidiary of that holding company, and they each will pursue uh, their post-merger activities. And under this new company, they will collaborate, uh, trying to generate the synergy of merger for development, procurement, and production will concretely flesh up this scheme. About this holding company, the holding company is going to be listed. And so under that listed company, Hino and uh, Mitsubishi Fuso, their brand uh, will enhance their competitiveness as the subsidiary company under that 100% owned, wholly owned companies. In terms of competition and growth, we'll ensure equal and fair competition is something that we aim at. That's the basic premise for our endeavors. And so based upon that basic premise, and we will comply with that principles, uh, we have already begun consulting with the relevant authorities and will try to obtain understanding and their approval by those authorities. And we intend to spend enough time so that synergy be generated through this uh, while gaining understanding and approval of the relevant authorities. So that's how we would like to pursue this. So I just combine my response to the first and second questions. So that's my response to your question. I, I, I want to second that what Sato-san said. And potentially, you can bring, bring back that last slide, because it, uh, it has a couple of really basic principles, which had been for us extremely important when we started the talks a couple of months ago. First of all, Hino and Fuso have to meet on eye level. Yeah, the, these are two very great, successful Japanese brands. And we want to keep the distinct brand identity of each and every one. Therefore, the sales organization, not just in Japan, but globally, will stay intact and separately. On the other side, we want to maximize the synergies between the two companies to joint development, joint procurement, joint production. And third, this will be a Japanese company, as therefore listed in Tokyo. Yeah? Daimler Trucks is a global company. A global company is something different than an international company. International company is a German company trying to export everywhere in the world. Daimler Truck is international, a global company. We are American in America. We are German in Germany, certainly, but we are Japanese in Japan. And therefore, this joint company has to be a Japanese company, and it has to be the strongest Japanese company ever on the commercial vehicle field. 
And that's a promise from Daimler Truck, that's a promise from Toyota, and that, that certainly will include a couple of outside investors, because if you are listed, it's not just two companies. It needs to be sufficient free float uh, on the uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange. And we are committed to that, and we will do everything possible to make it happen. Allow me to confirm the following point. Looking at this diagram, the scheme, the investment by Mitsubishi, is it going to disappear? Looking at the holding company, the shareholders are only Toyota and Daimler truck, and also the general shareholders. So those business operating companies are wholly owned by the holding company, but Mitsubishi has its uh, capital in the uh, Mitsubishi Fuso. How is that going to be handled, treated with going forward? Uh, first of all, when both companies merge, certainly everyone who is today a shareholder, either in Hino or in Fuso, will have a, proper, uh, a proportionate shareholding in the holding company. That will be determined during the next couple of months and then be announced today. It's just the MOU and now a lot of work is ahead of us, but then it will be announced and whoever has today shares either in Toyota uh, or uh, shares in Fuso or Hino will later have shares in the holding company and can do whatever uh, this company wants to do in Mitsubishi Fuso. Uh, Mitsubishi certainly will be then uh, a shareholder in the holding company as well. Thank you. We'll go on to the next question, please. The person in the front. I'm from Asahi Shimbun. My name is Kondo. Thank you. My first question will be slightly similar to the asked question about the history of this uh, collaboration. Uh, for, uh, for I want to ask uh, Ogiso-san and Deppen-san this question. And then my second question is for Sato-san. For to Ogiso-san, once again, I'd like to ask the question that for Hino, you had the f discovery of the misconduct last year in March, and as a company, you are still in the middle of reestablishing yourself, and there will be the uh, litigation issues, class action issues as well for Hino that you're working on. And the framework that you have announced with Mitsubishi Fuso, the discussion that you're having right now, from Hino's perspective, what kind of problem awareness do you have, and when did you start to participate? participate in the discussion. What was the uh, uh, the uh, how this history of how this led to today for you? And also for this inter integration, this merger, are, is Hino already a company worth of becoming merged with Mitsubishi Fuso? So I want to ask that question to Ogisa-san. And to Deppen-san, it is related question. The company situation uh, probably for Hino is not fully healthy right now. But you, even though of that situation, you have selected uh, Hino for, as your partner. So what was the part that you evaluated about Hino? And still, the, the misconduct issue has not completed yet for Hino. So I think you should have some anxieties going forward. And if you do, I'd like to know about that. And the second question is for Sato-san. It will be a similar question. After the misconduct of Hino was discovered as a parent company, Toyota had been uh, received a lot of criticism about the internal control as a corp entity. And in your company, in Toyota, I heard that you had a lot of discussions about internal control. And on the other hand, between Toyota and Hino, uh, you are, have different businesses, passenger cars and commercial vehicles, and it was difficult to find synergy between these two businesses. That was the explanation in the past. So once again, I'd like to ask about the perspective of internal control. And when you think about the growth of Hino as a company, probably inside of the company, uh, you, there is a possibility to increase the shareholding of Hino by Toyota and work together more. I think that was one option. But why is it that you've made this decision? Why did you come up with this uh, framework of collaboration between the four companies? Then for the first uh, question, please, uh, Ogiso-san, start. Yes, thank you. For your first question, I'd like to respond. 
You are correct. Last year, Hino, when we had the misconduct of the certification process discovered, Hino has taken this seriously, and we are determined to address this issue so that we can recover the trust back. And we are working on the necessary measures and activities one by one. We have been working on this, promoting this, but we have not completed all of the activities that we need to do. So we need to steadily work on this, be sincere to our customers, and promote this one by one. And an evaluation is not something that I do, whether we are cleared or not. It, the evaluation of whether we are a OK company is something that the society and the customers will do. So I will continue the efforts thoroughly so that our customers can put trust back on our company. And for, however, on the other hand, we need to be prepared for the future for such social issues like carbon neutrality. And as I have explained, by just our own single efforts, we are not able to create a picture, a vision for the future for Hino. And in that uh, context, we have received this offer uh, to uh, participate in this collaboration. And that is why we wanted to join. And, and because we want to join this collaboration, we are going to be fully committed and sincerely work on fixing the problems and address all of the uh, issues related to the uh, 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 problem. So Depensan, please. Yeah, of course, we have been uh, uh, in the marketplace with Hino uh, for a long time as competitors, very clear. And uh, also we at Fuso, we respect uh, Hino as a strong brand and a strong company with a strong customer base uh, and a lot of brand loyalty in the marketplace. Uh, so from that perspective, we have high respect for, for the strong company. Uh, we also see the efforts uh, that are being taken to overcome the past, uh, as Ogisu san just mentioned. And what was appealing to us as well is Hino is also a, a pure commercial vehicle company uh, and therefore facing also the same challenges we are facing in terms of scale and future investment. And this is why we felt confident that uh, there must be a common ground to engage for the future uh, development of decarbonized uh, technologies together. And I think uh, when we started the discussion, this has proven to be quite effective, and that brought us here today. Thank you. Then I'd like to respond to the second question that was raised regarding corporate governance. And from the intention of our question, probably you want to ask about the group governance of Toyota. And centering around our chairman, Mr. Toyota, Toyota has been trying to regain the Toyota-ness or uniqueness of Toyota, and we have various initiatives and activities been implemented to do that. And when we think about corporate governance, there are several aspects and factors. One will be about the capital side. Another thing will be about the operation, and then there will be about the sharing of vision. So from a multifaceted uh, way, we're trying to approach this corporate governance issue. And this time, regarding the Hino case, the root of the management is the products. So it is in the operation field. Making In the area of making cars, Toyota is not able to fully utilize the know-how that we have in the areas that Hino is operating in. And even up to now, for the relationship with Hino, we always have been thinking of what will be a better relationship, what will be the better environment that we can create together. That kind of discussion initiative has been done, but we have always come back to this difference with the business side, which is the difference in passenger car and commercial vehicle. So there is a limitation in Toyota supporting a Hino, which is a commercial vehicle business company. So from that perspective, we have decided that with the four companies' effort, we're going to create a future-looking big framework for the to create the future of commercial vehicles. And with that shared vision, we were able to create this relationship between the four companies. So within that framework, we want to, uh, to see uh, to seek uh, the and borrow the strengths of Daimler truck for which strengths we don't have, and also for Mitsubishi Fuso want to receive the advice from perspectives that we don't have so that we can create a better Hino for the future. And uh, that is what uh, Mr. Ogiso uh, has talked about with a strong determination that he has. And as he has said, uh, we are determined to work together uh, so that we can promote also the efforts for Hino to move toward the future. 
Thank you. And from here, we'll go on to receiving questions from those participating online. Uh, those of you who are participating online, if you have a question, uh, please use raise hand um, button on the upper part of the screen. And we'll call you, appoint you, so please demute your microphone and turn on the video, please. Now, Nikkan Industrial Newspaper, Masatoshi-san, please. I will switch the screen, so if you see yourself on the screen, please start your question. Masatoshi of Nikkan Kogyo Shinbun, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. First of all, uh, this is a very basic question. This uh, framework for scheme for merger, you are going to establish this holding company. And the reason why you have decided to establish this holding company, could you describe and explain the reason behind that? The second question, for Toyota, the position of commercial vehicle business, where does it stand? How do you position that? Toyota alone uh, is very difficult to support commercial vehicle business of Hino. Uh, is Hino's position in Toyota's business changed going forward? What is your view on that? And on that basis, uh, you'll be collaborating with the Daimler truck, the significance of doing so. And for achieving carbon neutrality, you are joining hands with other partners. So from the viewpoint of creating partners or friends, uh, how do you view uh, this collaboration with Daimler Truck? So the first question, I would like to invite Daum CEO of a Daimler Truck uh, to take up, please. Uh, yeah, and I think I completely understand that uh, Toyota reached out to Daimler Trucks uh, because we have on the truck side certainly a significant knowledge. We have a significant size. We have the largest heavy duty platform in the entire world. So this is definitely a benefit that we can bring into this collaboration. On the other side, as I mentioned already, uh, on the light duty side, our Fuso brand alone would be uh, relatively small <coughs> and still facing significant investments as we did when it comes, for example, to battery electric trucks. The e counter was worldwide the first electric truck uh, and today, it's, in my opinion, one of the most advanced, finest electric trucks you can drive. But here I could see a lot of beneficial uh, crossover, let's say, ideas for future technology between us and Toyota, where then the combined company of Hino and Fuso will benefit strongly uh, on that side. So in my opinion, the combination, having Toyota with uh, full, let's say, technology knowledge of the Japanese market and supplier industry, Hino with his strong heritage, Fuso with his broad portfolio and the first successes uh, on, on the electric truck side, and then Daimler trucks with his really global, let's say, dominance on the heavy duty truck side. I would say this is an ideal combination where this combined Japanese truck manufacturer, Hino and Fuso, will have everything which is necessary for a successful future. Uh, Mr. Sato, would you like to add a few words to that? May I? Koji Sato of Toyota Motor Corporation, as was mentioned by Mr. Daum of uh, Daimler Truck. Uh, allow me to share with you some of my feelings and thinking as well. In terms of the framework, as Mr. Dam responded to the earlier question, that is to say the Hino and Mitsubishi Fuso, both of these companies do have very strong brands, and each company has its own strengths. And we have the highest respect for that, and that's how this discussion started out, both companies having strong respect to each other, and also in creating the strategy for further growth and development in the future, it's very necessary to collaborate together to seek that future. And that relates to the case technology. 
or the technological uh, investment or development uh, for the spread of hydrogen technology. And those are the technologies uh, that Toyota and Daimler Truck has as their strengths. So for those four companies uh, to leverage the strength in the bigger framework can establish and strengthen the foundation further. And to be able to envision that and enable that is the reason why we decided to establish this holding company. And the second question? Uh, probably uh, I would like, I should uh, invite Mr. Sato to respond to the second question first and then uh, invite Mr. Dami if necessary. Yes, in terms of the uh, new structure of uh, Toyota, as we explained Toyota's strategy in that context, that is to say to change the future of uh, the cars and vehicles, and that's our passion and also to realize our own transformation uh, into a mobility company. So with those strong passions, we have embraced the future for the stronger future for Toyota. And as we did that, including the commercial vehicle domain, for different forms of mobility, we need to have our own solution to be able to offer that, leaving no one behind in Toyota's business domain, we need to put that important domain to the strong footing of growth strategy. And that, I think, is our own mission. So for the commercial vehicle business, when we consider commercial vehicles to be playing a very important part in the social infrastructure, from that perspective, we at Toyota wanted to have some uh, engagement in that commercial vehicle business. And as we try to achieve our own purpose, that is very important, I believe. However, when it comes to the way in which we'll engage in that, of course, it should be the collaboration in which the strength of each company can be maximized. And as we have been saying in the past, in order to take advantage of the economy of scale can help us accelerate the speed of moving forward into the future and creating such environment becomes especially important in the times that we live today. So from that perspective, in terms of the way in which we engage ourselves, working together with many partners uh, to take the step by looking at the entire picture of the mobility society, we would like to engage in this commercial vehicle business as well. Uh, Mr. Dam, would you like uh, to make any additional comments? Absolutely correct. I get uh, often asked, why is Daimler Truck as the largest truck manufacturer in the world are seeking partnerships? And my answer is the same as Sato-san's answer. We have, we have a massive task as the automotive industry ahead of us. We have to change a, a, a system that was successful over the last 120 years within the next 10 years to complete new system. And that's globally. And we have to do it to save our planet. This is so massive that you can't do it alone. And it's not just about our cars itself. It needs a complete different infrastructure from the energy generation to the energy distribution, whether it's electricity or whether it's hydrogen. And those providers need a united industry, automotive industry on the other side so they can't develop uh, a hydrogen system for Toyota, and then they do a hydrogen system for Fuso, and then they do a completely different hydrogen system for, for Hino. That is not possible. That is just possible to have one. Otherwise, we will miss the targets of saving the planet and saving the planet in time. And therefore, we have to work together. And therefore, you see, especially in these times, such corporations like we do. Thank you. Thank you, Masatoshi-san. Now to the next question. Online, if you have your hand up. From Junichi Newspapers, Watanabe-san, please. We will switch the screen. And when you see yourself on the screen, please start with your question. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. I am Watanabe from Chunichi. Thank you for this opportunity. 
Well, you talked about the case technologies in hydrogen area. That that will be the advantage, and uh, where you all share the advantage uh, between the four companies. And I have a question about the hydrogen area. For Toyota, as we uh, cover uh, the, your company, we hear about the hydrogen supply chain establishing efforts, and you're engaged in various hydrogen activities. And currently, even though you have those in, uh, those work uh, work those initiatives, you have a lot of challenges in the full process from making, transporting, and storage and using hydrogen. That's what we feel. And now, having the merger between Hino and Fuso, what will be the future specific synergy that uh, you envision. Sato-san and Daum-san, I would like to ask this question, please. And also, uh, to Mr. Daum, I also have another question about Daimler Trucks' uh, hydrogen know-how or knowledge that you have built up to now. By having this integration of the two companies, do you think that it, your knowledge of hydrogen technologies can be reflected in the merged companies? So that is another question for Mr. Daum. So let's start with uh, Sato-san to respond initially, and then we'll ask Mr. Daum to respond to uh, next. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the question. For what you have pointed out, in order to achieve the hydrogen society, making, transporting, and using uh, will be all the processes that we have to think about and to build the supply chain for hydrogen from those perspectives. That's very important to cover all of those areas. And in addition to that, if we try to implement the supply chain, we have to look at each region and also each area, what the most appropriate technology is, what is the most the appropriate volume to build up, it will be very different according to the regions and areas that we are talking about. So even if you say hydrogen, there are various uh, environment uh, and various technologies that needs to be developed. And therefore, Daimler Truck and Toyota, we are two companies that were er early entrants in trying to develop the hydrogen technology, fuel cell, engine, uh, utilizing engine, trying uh, the hydrogen engine technologies, and also for the liquid hydrogen area, both companies have been working on the R&D and have each uh, the, uh, the knowledge and expertise in this area. And for the hydrogen technology area, by having a collaboration between the companies, we will be able to engage from multiple perspectives at the same time for hydrogen technology. That will become possible. And also, we need to do a demonstration and then implementation in order to understand what the actual issues are and then fix that so that uh, we can disseminate uh, more quickly into society. So the Hino and the Mitsubishi Fuso companies having the two brands uh, be joining hands, and then we can think about the actual products and think about what will be the exit uh, project uh, for these technology development. We'll be able to look from all of these angles by having the uh, integration of two companies scheme, and it will be very helpful in accelerating the various efforts uh, toward implementing and uh, realizing hydrogen technology. I would say when it comes to fuel cells, there are two true pioneers in that respect since the last 20, 25 years. And the one is Toyota and the other is Daimler. And I know a lot of our fuel cell specialists had been working together with uh, Toyota recently. Daimler took the path that we really concentrate on the 150, 300 kilowatt huge fuel cells for heavy duty trucking. Uh, which, is for, which were, for example, too large for our inner city buses. So we reached out to Toyota and the Daimler buses in Europe run now with the Toyota fuel cell. So you see uh, the base technology is the same. However, sometimes for smaller ones, you need a specialist, and then on the larger ones, you need a specialist. And here are the two specialists, and that is, when I look at the portfolio of uh, Fuso and of Hino, uh, in the need of both. So there is a lot of possibilities to work together. And there was one positive uh, uh, example in the last couple of hours. As you know, we had done the negotiations in the last couple of months absolutely in secrecy because this would have been important news, as I see here with this full press conference, there are only a very limited amount of people inside our companies were involved in those things, mostly people from the strategy department. But I got really absolutely positive uh, feedback from the engineers back in Germany when they read 
the news and say that we can't wait to wait and, and to get in contact with our colleagues at Toyota to talk about the next couple of projects we can do. And I could see uh, enormous uh, important thing which I could see could change in the automotive field. Uh, the playing field for zero emission a lot could be hydrogen combustion as well. So you just replace uh, gasoline or diesel by hydrogen. Could be one possibility. Uh, needs still a lot of development work and research, but I could see the great engineering departments of all four partners here come up with some really good solutions for that. But we'll have to see. So that starts, that started just a couple of hours ago when we went public and will continue for the next months and years. Thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, very interesting to hear from you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Watanabe-san. So the next question is also uh, from the online participants. Yeah. Best car, Hongo-san, please. I will switch the screen, so if you see yourself on the screen, please start your question. Best Car Magazine Hongo is my name. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I have two questions, too. With respect to the commercial vehicles, you talked about the hydrogen in relation to that. In the case of Daimler truck, it has technology and its expertise. Of course, that can be applied to passenger cars as well. And so the question is to Mr. Sato of Toyota. The technology that Daimler truck has, its expertise and technology, can that be applied to uh, Toyota's passenger cars? Are you intending to use that? And another question, in Japan, you have those initiatives underway for CJP in Japan. Is Mitsubishi Fuso going to be a part of that? Is it going to join that? Or do you intend the existing framework for CJPT? Two questions, please. Uh, let me respond to your first question first. This uh, framework for collaboration This sort of a framework for collaboration to work well, what is most important is to respect each other, know each other, and for that to happen, it takes time. It needs time. Well, with Mr. Daum and with Mr. Deppen, we have had continued discussion over the years, and we talked about the economic benefits and business benefits that collaboration could bring about. But in the case of Toyota, here in Toyota, at the initial stage of the discussion, including uh, Chairman Toyota, at the uh, top lineup, uh, management lineup, the uh, sharing and uh, empathy with respect to the vision that we have both as well was the starting point and basis. And we intend to exchange information on the technology that we each have with an open mind. And as mentioned by Daum-san, engineers of uh, Daimler Truck uh, said that they can hardly wait to talk to or contact their counterparts engineers in Toyota. And that really makes me overjoyed. And uh, Mr. Nakajima, who is the chief technology officer of Toyota, was a part of the discussion, who exercised leadership in bringing about this discussion to this collaboration. His vitality, his leadership that I know very well, judging from that, the engineers of Daimler truck, with them, I'm sure they can discuss the future of uh, commercial vehicle business with smiles. And I can just see engineers who will be having very open discussion with each other. That could happen in Japan, that could happen in Germany and various places, and concrete efforts will be promoted in various parts. That's what I'm expecting and hoping to see. As we get to know each other, spending enough time to that, I hope we can create something together. The second question that is addressed 
Uh, relating to participation or non-participation of Mitsubishi who sold to CJPT. And I'd like to invite Dippinson first to take up the question to be followed by Mr. Sato. Yeah, thank you, hong san for the question. CJPT is something we have been, of course, uh, observing and watching for a long time, uh, a very important initiative. Uh, I think it's too early to come to these conclusions uh, if or when Mitsubishi Fuso will join. Uh, but I think the spirit of the cooperation we are announcing today uh, bears a lot of similar elements, which is basically uh, sharing strengths, sharing forces, and sharing spirits to create good solutions for the future. And I think this is what's driving us. And uh, many other questions have to be resolved going forward, and this is what we're going to do. With respect to CJPT and that framework, for the greater dissemination of case technology, we wanted to have a broader framework for planning and to accelerate those initiatives and to put uh, flesh to that concept. The like-minded partners decided to join together and that form this CJPT framework. As I responded to in the earlier question, as an organization, CJPT is a vehicle. But we are going to promote this on the project-by-project project basis. The partners can flexibly work with other partners sharing the same uh, thoughts and visions. And in this manner, the concrete project will be implemented. And that's a basic concept and uh, working philosophy of a CJPT. As four companies discuss uh, with each other for the collaboration, if uh, such an opportunity arises, of course, Mitsubishi Fuso uh, is very much welcome. And we would like to deepen our discussion that could allow us to do that. And we will uh, like to have a deeper discussion to implement that in the future. Thank you very much. I have a high expectations for your future. Thank you, Mr. Hongo. Welcome back to the physical venue side. So those who have questions, please raise your hand. Person in the front row, please. I'm Umeda from TBS. Thank you for the opportunity. I have one question to Sato-san. In this announcement, you talked about hydrogen, and uh, I think you've talk, been talking about hydrogen in many areas, and one of the big major themes of the collaboration between four companies will be hydrogen. That's what you explained. When I talked to you before, you said that to have a constant, tr to collect and gather the efforts of hydrogen and to uh, develop it here, you said that the probably starting point will be commercial vehicles. And I think I'm asking a very basic question, but why is it that the, why does the commercial vehicle makers have to work on hydrogen technology? Maybe there's a, a relation to the characteristic of the uh, hydrogen as an energy. I'd like to uh, ask that question. Uh, let me answer that as a commercial vehicle uh, expert here. Uh, you need such an enormous amount of energy to propel 40 tons up a hill uh, that with battery, it starts to become A, heavy, and B, when it comes to charging, you are suddenly in the 700 kilowatt, one gigawatt, uh, uh, one megawatt uh, chargers, which is always a big requirement for the electric grid. So in my opinion, on the, on the commercial vehicle side, it's extremely difficult to go entirely by battery electric. But that doesn't mean that battery electric is not playing a part. As you see, when it comes to the uh, Fuso e counter, when you go to inner city and lighter loads, then battery electric is like on the passenger car side one possibility. But you need both. So it's not either or, which would be nice from commercial way, from the commercial side. And when it comes to funding, it is both. And that's exactly part of the problem where you need larger scale. For example, we at Daimler at the moment we still pursue diesel because a lot of our, our business will be diesel. And if we go to countries outside the triad, triad is uh, United States, Europe, and Japan, a lot of countries will continue with diesel. So you have to go with diesel, you have to go with battery electric, and you have to go with hydrogen. That's three powertrains instead of one in the past, but not a single truck more to sell. So how to fund three times the amount with not a single truck more to sell? You just 
team up with someone else. Uh, and that's exactly why you see this type of uh, co collaboration right now and not 20 years ago. <clears throat> so if I can add a little bit uh, from the technical perspective to what Mr. Dom has just said, in the commercial vehicle sector, hydrogen is right now very important to do the demonstration in society right now and also to secure scale. These will be important for hydrogen and compared to passenger cars, and as long as we create the environment, a necessary environment, then it will be a beneficial for uh, advantages to move uh, hi uh, hydrogen's uh, fuel cells better. Uh, we can have uh, stations um, and that can operate well. And there will be a lot of opportunities that we can uh, uh, utilize uh, for the commercial vehicle side. Uh, the start will be better, so you will utilize uh, those benefits as much as possible uh, so that we can quickly achieve a hydrogen society as much as possible. So that is why we have been saying that probably the commercial vehicle business will be the leaders uh, when we try to proliferate this technology. That is why I have been explaining from that perspective. And just as Mr. Dom has said, uh, this uh, there's that kind of large uh, stock uh, scale and uh, the uh, energy is necessary. So yes, thank you. So because the time is limited, I'm very sorry, but we'd like to uh, limit the question to two more people. Thank you. Now on this row, the third one from the top, uh, the person wearing a mask. Thank you very much. NHK, Toma is my name. Uh, one question addressed to Mr. Sato, please. Uh, moving toward this uh, collaboration, the discussion leading to that, uh, you are going to uh, work together with the Mitsubishi Fuso. In that case, the Toyota Motor Corporation, with respect to commercial vehicles manufacturers here in Japan, either directly or indirectly, uh, you're going to have um, ownership or capital relationship with all of those commercial uh, vehicles. Your aim of doing that, uh, what you are trying to accomplish, are you going to uh, see some benefits on the passenger uh, car side uh, by working with those commercial vehicle uh, manufacturers? Well, I will give you a very simple answer to that question. The future is something that we create together, working together, and that's the essence of what we are doing to that. Uh, you, might, you might pursue uh, business like just trying to focus on ownership of capital amongst others, but as Mr. Dow mentioned at the very outset, the automotive industry and its future cannot be created by a single company alone. We need to have a broader framework with collaboration to accelerate our efforts and to enhance the possibility of realizing what we aim at in the future at the earlier speed. So in that sense, with having such a partnership, we can pursue simultaneously uh, multifaceted topics and themes, and that will allow us to embrace broader challenge for the future as well. And to be able to do us would help us achieve more prosperous and more fruitful mobility society going forward. So that's important. So with this philosophy of creating the future together, uh, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity and deepen this collaboration uh, to achieve that objective. That's what I'm aiming at. Thank you. So I'm very sorry, but we'd like to take the last question now. The person in the second row. I am Miura from Truck Magazine Full Road. Full Road. So, for the Hydrogen Society to be realized, I think it's not something that we can expect in a short term perspective, but so in the transition period, I think BV and hybrids uh, will be necessary. And until then, until the Hydrogen Society realizes, in the meantime, the technology that Fuso has, the technology that uh, Hino has, I think you're going to utilize their strengths and consolidate it in products. Do you have that kind of vision? This is my one question. Thank you for the question. So for this question, should we ask uh, Deppin san and Ogiso san to respond? Yeah, happy to do so. Thank you, Miura san. Uh, I think, uh, yes, it will be a while, but I think we also see already quite promising approaches around the world uh, that we see hydrogen technologies being applied uh, in heavy duty trucks. Uh, we see it also uh, segment by segment, uh, as mentioned before, 
In the urban transportation, we see a lot of advantage of the uh, battery electric technology that is already available and in the market. Uh, so that gives an immediate impact to urban transportation uh, on locally zero emission, on, on noise reduction, and thus contributes to, to the uh, transportation in the society. And midterm, we are of course looking at battery electric solutions as well as fuel cell solutions uh, and combustion engines to determine what is the best technology for the relevant applications. And there we are confident that with the strong support from two strong shareholders and cooperating uh, with Hino, we see very good opportunities to accelerate that development. So I would also like to respond to, actually with uh, Mr. Daum and Mr. Deppen, I have basically the same way of thinking. So I think I'm repeating my uh, repeating the question, uh, the answers that was provided from Daum-san and Deppen-san. Just as uh, Mr. Daum has said, it's not about having the battery EVs and the fuel cells competing each other and having one technology win. And I think Mr. Daum has uh, explained the reason why we, we are thinking in that way, in a beautiful way. So in love for the long haul, uh, uh, heavy-duty trucks, it's very difficult to use the battery technology. So that's why we use fuel cells. But Canter and we have a Dutro EV in Hino. These kinds of battery uh, e-trucks, uh, e uh, batteries will be appropriate for the uh, inner city uh, transportation. And I, so I think it's about uh, having diversified technology to meet the diversified needs. And I'm repeating my, uh, the uh, answers by my colleagues here, but uh, it's really about it being impossible to do all of this alone as one company. That is why we want to team up with these the companies uh, here, and so that we will be able to respond to the needs of the customers and also the region, and we're going to prepare for that. That is why, uh, in order to make that preparation, we've created this framework of the collaboration. And with the four members here, we try. Uh, I think we are sharing the same vision. I think uh, the responses you can hear that we're looking at the same direction. So I hope that uh, uh, we will be able to connect uh, this uh, the enthusiasm into the uh, discussions that we will be having after this. Did we answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. So now the time has uh, come to an end, so we'd like to end this question and answer session.